Hey folks, thanks for tuning in and for first time watchers, thank you for checking us out. In this video, I'm going to basically unpack and dissect this specific rig. This was a bike that I just took on a bikepacking trip from Iowa all the way to the Canadian United States border. Roughly a 650 mile route, half pavement, half gravel. The trip was five and a half days, so there was quite a few days that were nine plus hour days in the saddle. So I built this bike up not only for being in the saddle all day, but just being efficient when you are on the bike all day, every kind of minute and second and hour uh, definitely counts. So let's get started. So what I wanna start with is just the drivetrain. So this is the GRX 815. It's the DI2 11 speed two by drivetrain. Not only is this drivetrain incredible, DI2 batteries last a very long time. I didn't need to charge my battery the entire trip, but the feel, the function, it's just probably the best drivetrain that I've tested. Definitely the best two by drivetrain I've used. The lever feel, the lever hoods, you just feel really locked in. The shifting is extremely crisp and reliable. And yeah, the battery, I, like I said, it just works so well. You've got a pretty decent range. This is something that I didn't necessarily touch before the trip, this is the stock drivetrain that comes with this Salsa Warbird. If I had more climbing, I definitely would consider uh, potentially throwing on a larger cassette in the back or going uh, down to smaller chain rings up front. So outside of that, a few changes I made to the bike. The Warbird comes with, I think it was like a 44 or 42 cowbell uh, handlebar. So I ended up throwing a 46 centimeter uh, cow chipper. So the cow chipper has a little bit more flair. It's in the middle of the cowbell and the wood chipper from Salsa. The carbon bar, so just better uh, vibration damping. And I ended up flipping the stem. So it's a plus negative six stem. All that creates is a little bit more of an upright position. You know, if you're in the bike for a long period of time, that's a lot easier on the body. The other thing I did to the cockpit was I added uh, aero bars. And no, aero bars are not for being aero in this instance. I wanted a, another hand position. So, you know, paired with the drop bars, which already creates a number of different hand positions. You know, you've, you're down in the, in the drops, you're in the hoods, you're on top of the bar. Basically, it creates another fourth position that's super comfortable over the long haul, just pedaling gravel roads or even pavement. It's a lot more easier on the body to switch from position to position, and it's a lot easier on the hands. I've definitely dealt with quite a bit of numbness with flat bars before, just being in the same position all the time. So if I had flat bars or if I toured on this route with flat bars, I definitely would be using some sort of a bar end just to create another hand position. So what I ended up also doing was just putting on a bunch of water bottles. So this frame itself has just mounts galore. I could carry six water bottles if I didn't have this frame bag in here. I ended up just carrying four and that was plenty. The route goes through quite a few towns and it also passes over quite a few creeks where I could filter water. If I didn't need water, I just wouldn't put water up in the uh, on the fork just to, to keep that weight off the, the front end of the bike. And then on the bottom here, I just have a tool kit and that is basically almost my full toolkit, excluding a tube and pump. So I've got everything I need in there, any bell and whistle I need if I break something on the bike. So that, that works really well down there. I don't necessarily need to touch it, but it is still very accessible if I need to get my multi-tool out or get my rag out to clean uh, my chain. Another upgrade I made to the bike was I threw on different tires. So I had uh, cannonballs. I think the bike comes with cannonballs from Terrabel. I ended up throwing on the new Washburn tires from Terrabel in the 42 millimeter category. They are the light and supple ones, which actually was pretty nice. Just feeling these tires, the light and supple was a little bit thicker than their previous light and supple. I don't know if that's just me or just the wash burn, but I'll do a full review on these tires in the coming days. I'm very pleased with them. The center slick was awesome for the pavement and they hooked up really well in the gravel when cornering. Just as far as contact points, uh, I used the Pro Gravel Comfort Bar Tape. It's a three mil tape. It's got a plenty of cushion to it and I overlapped it pretty close to each other. So it, it 
actually created a little bit more comfort. It has a nice kind of grippy feel to it, and that's what I like. And that grippy feel doesn't actually fade over time. It remains uh, grippy like that. Uh, you know a thousand plus miles in which is something I appreciate and then I use an Ergon SR men's small medium saddle these saddles are great for me but everybody's butt is different so make sure to head to your local bike shop for more information on Ergon saddles or any other saddle that might fit you so let's get into the bags obviously probably the most important and fun part of bike packing is bike packing bags I love bikepacking bags because I loved how they've evolved over time. So for starters, I rocked the Porcelain Rocket Mr. Fusion. This is the smaller of the two dry bags. I actually did a review not too long ago on this bag and the Revelate Designs Spine Lock. I compared both of them. So if you want a deeper dive into this bag, I'll link that in the description below. This bag worked great though for gravel roads, uh, pavement. It's really meant for being super stable over rough terrain. So it didn't really work too terribly difficult, but it clamps around the seat post and then has this little mini rack that extends out. Uh, and then this top part actually uh, mounts underneath the saddle rail, more or less like a traditional seat pack. So as you can see, this is the size of the bag. <laughs> I'd probably say it's eh, maybe close to 10 pounds or so. I won't touch this bag until I get to my campsite, unless I'm in an emergency and need to get in my sleeping bag in the middle of the day if it's snowing or something. So this is a waterproof bag, which is really nice. So that's why I like to keep my sleep system in here. The last thing that's in here was the thing that I packed last because it was damp and I was trying to dry it out in the sun. So this is just my rainfly from my Big Agnes tent. And this Big Agnes tent is something really special. It's not launched yet, so I can't tell you what it is, but you'll dig it for sure. So this is just the actual tent itself. And then I've got my sleeping pad. It's a 20 by 66, so it's a little, it's the short one. It works really well for me. And then I'll carry my food in here. So I've got a bunch of good to go meals. I've got the pad thai, which is my second favorite. The Thai curry, which is hands down my favorite. And then uh, that's a two serving. And then I've got a one serving just in case I eat a meal at a restaurant or something earlier on in the day or mid afternoon and I don't necessarily need a full two serving meal, I'll cook this one serving meal up. So typically I'll carry most of my food in my seat pack, but then a little bit in my handlebar bag just to even things out. For this trip, I used a 40 degree bag because it was pretty warm down south. It did get really chilly up north, but it was totally fine, especially with my long johns. And if I really needed to, I could throw my down coat on. So this is the Big Agnes Pluton 40 degree, and this works extremely well for summer. Can unzip it and just drape it over myself when it's super hot at night. For this trip in, in the fall, this worked really well. If it was chillier, I would definitely consider a 25 to 30 degree bag. And lastly, I have a uh, Portland Design Works danger zone rear light. When I am on pavement or even a busier gravel road, I am seen and this is super important to me. I also have one of these on the back of my fanny pack. All right, so next up, let's dive into the frame bag. And this is an outer shell frame bag. It's just a half frame bag. It's just a Cordura, really nice frame bag that I recently got for this trip. Uh, fits perfectly. This is the medium uh, and this fits a 56 very nicely. So going into the bag, it does come with a water resistant zipper. It's a smaller water resistant zipper. And basically right here, what we have is my trash. So uh, when I don't necessarily want to throw things, say, uh, back in bags or on my top tube bag, I'll just throw my trash right in this little nook here. And it's just super convenient to basically take the trash out and throw it in the, the bin uh, when I see it. So that's the first thing that's in there, but I also have the easily accessible water filter. So the water filter that I used on this trip is the MSR Trail Shot. Uh, so basically you just stick this in the stream or the lake and basically just pump this right here and I still have a little bit in there so it's leaking but it works it just takes a little bit more time to fill up uh, your water bottles compared to some other filters out there anything that MSR makes I trust and uh, I trust that this will 
not get me sick. And so this is what I used for this trip. And then right inside the front again is easy access to my chain lube. And this is just, so it's there every morning. It reminds me that I need to lube my chain. If it was hidden in my repair kit, I wouldn't do it. So inside the frame bag, I've got a pump, my DOP kit, which has everything I need, a stove, and a tube. This is just an MSR pocket rocket stove kit, which this is so great because it packs so small. Not the smallest out there, but it works really well for just boiling water and drinking coffee out of it. Inside that is the pot handle, the stove itself, isobutane canister. I actually only used one of these. I cooked dinner four nights and uh, I only used one of these. I still have a little bit left. 110 gram canister just for coffee in the morning and to boil a little bit of water at night for my meal worked just fine. And then the nice thing about this system is it comes with this little measuring cup and it just slides right onto the pot itself. And the other thing is this thing definitely rattles from time to time if you don't orient the stove and that handle really well. So take the time to make sure it doesn't rattle. Going into the DOP kit, which is basically the everything bag that I have. A uh, headlamp, super important for seeing things at night. The most important thing, your toothbrush. I've got a spork. Yes, I use a spork. Classic REI Thai spork that I bought ages ago. I've got a little first aid kit. So it's got basically all the minimal first aid stuff that I need. And then right here I have like ibuprofen, I've got vitamins, heartburn pills. I tend to eat too much, too much junk food when I'm touring. So I even have some electrolyte pills if it's really hot. And sometimes I will take ibuprofen after a big day on the saddle just to help reduce the swelling in my legs. I try to avoid that and I do use uh, Floyd's of Leadville Arnica Balm. Just rub my legs at night uh, before I go to bed. It's a nice aroma, but it also does help with swelling. And then also in here is where I store most of my coffee. If I had more frame space, I might actually bring an AeroPress or pour over or something. But for this instance, I just have instant coffee. Uh, this is from Northern Coffee Works and then this is the instant coffee, the Ruby stuff that I really enjoy. And Ruby is out of Wisconsin. Good humans that own that company, so I love to support them. So a bunch of toothpaste, I actually have two for some reason. And then this is a tent pole crutch. And taped to that is a bunch of duct tape. I have nylon thread and then some athletic tape. That athletic tape looks really dirty. I should probably replace that. And then I just have a little uh, pack towel. Packing the DOP kit up kind of where it's easily accessible if I do need to get to that first aid kit or if I need to get to ibuprofen or if I really, really want to brush my teeth, I can do that. So uh, just having it up front here is super, super helpful. All right, so just working my way over to my top two bag and my stem bag. So the top two bag basically just carries all of my snacks. It's a big top two bag from Andrew the Maker. It's a bolt-on top two bag. It works really well. And if you haven't checked out our top two bag gear index yet, make sure to do that. It's great. It was just posted by Miles not a month ago. And it has all of the top two bags in the world in one spot. So in this bag right now, let's see what we have in here. Probably no gummy bears because I love gummy bears and Swedish fish and all that junk food. So I have things that I probably don't eat as often. So I've got a Kind Protein Bar, Pro Meal, which is great, you know, if, if you need a big boost. Organic Coconut Almond Butter from Pro, Pro Bar, which is super tasty. I've got some peanuts here. I've got oh, some Tailwind Nutrition. I'll add Tailwind Nutrition like every morning to a bottle so that I can not have to eat. I can just drink my calories and get my electrolytes, just kind of get balanced for the day. And I also have some for say, if it's like afternoon and I need a little kick, I have some caffeinated Tailwind as well. And then and, and Tailwind, one of these has 200 calories in it. So just add it to the water and you're basically hydrating and uh, putting in calories. It's actually pretty close to empty now that after I uh, did this tour, but yeah, I would, you know, if I go into a store, I'd buy some Swedish fish. I would definitely buy a Snickers bar, uh, potentially a payday, depending on how hot it is. I'll buy some potato chips and just basically crumple them up and stuff them in there, or I'll try to stuff them in my saddlebag. My saddlebag's kind of the backup for some heavier things, and I can even strap it on uh, the top so if I want, you know, a snack without having to go into it, I can do that. I did that with cheese curds on this tour. I did that with 
uh, cookies. Uh, I would buy cookies and add them to the top two bag. You know, you know how it is. It's just like whatever you're craving at the time you enter Quick Trip, you just go, go for it. But just like in general, when I do go into a store, I'd like, before I go there, I try to think about what I need because once you're in there, it's definitely overwhelming. So like, oh, I needed wet ones and oh, I needed uh, some more batteries for my GPS and oh, I, I forgot I ran out of ibuprofen. I need to get ibuprofen. Before you actually step foot in a convenience store, think about what you need beforehand. It's super helpful. All right, so in my STEM bag is basically my electronics. So right on the outside is my InReach Mini. And this is awesome so that my wife can see where I'm at. So when I run out of uh, cell service or I'm not, when I camp at a uh, spot that doesn't have cell service, I can text her through my phone. And I, I need to do a review on this because it is an incredible resource. Not to mention you can actually upload your track to your specific map and see where you're at. Um, and if you don't have cell service, it's a very detailed map. There are a number of different subscription options for the device that should be able to accommodate your needs and desires. And then in the side here, I have more batteries and these batteries are good batteries when the GPS batteries die. The other thing on the outside of my stem bag and my Revelate feed bag is hand sanitizer. And normally I would never bring this, but the pandemic, it's crazy. And I think I'll probably always carry this now just because the pandemic has likely changed the way we live forever and it's good to be clean. Inside my feed bag is all of my electronics. For me, you know, electronics, they're important because that's the way I'm showing you these videos. That's the way that I live my life. That being said, they're not necessarily all that necessary. Uh, but if you want to be able to communicate with your loved ones um, and be able to communicate with other folks out there or just in case of emergencies, it's good to have some of these items. So this is just a uh, power bank. This is great for being able to charge my phone, my GPS if I need to, my DI2, and obviously my GoPro batteries and my camera batteries. I typically carry uh, extra batteries for those, so I do have an extra camera battery, and I do carry the camera that is videoing me right now in my fanny pack. Uh, this is just a extra battery for that. I also have some extra battery lights. So I do carry a light up front. That's the Phoenix BC21R. I like to have it on during the day, especially if I'm on a road or something like that in the flashing mode, just to, to make people aware of me being there. I have an extra GoPro battery in here, ways to charge my phone and my devices, AA batteries, backups for my GPS, and then I also have AAA batteries for not only my rear blinky lights, but also for my headlamp. I do end up using this battery pack almost every night to just recharge my phone. My phone is a great resource to have because I downloaded the map on my phone. Phones have come a long way, so if you don't have a GPS device, uh, you can navigate on your phone. That being said, I wouldn't suggest doing that just because sometimes taking your phone out or using your phone's battery, uh, you could probably get a little bit more use out of a GPS so that you don't necessarily have to drain the phone battery all day long. And that is why I like to use AA batteries for my GPS devices because it's not something that I have to charge. That being said, it is wasteful. From time to time, I do use the Wahoo Element Roam for shorter trips and that's just a rechargeable device. But for trips like this, especially scouting trips, I've been using the Garmin E-Trex 35 Touch and it's proved to be a really great tool for not only just navigation, but scouting. All right, folks, and last but not least, I will unpack the old pronghorn, which is hands down my favorite bike packing bag I own. Normally on this trip, I actually put the tent poles on the outside of the bag. But the last day I was like, I'm just gonna try to throw them inside. And I did, and so this uh, this has the poles inside the bag. Either way, it worked for me. It was a really cold morning, so the first thing in here was my down jacket. I threw this on and actually wore it for a little bit. And the next thing was what I was wearing again that morning. These are just a rain pant that is three-fourths length, so I cut them. And this is nice because not only is this basically my knee warmer, but it also helps when it does rain out. But I can take them on and off without taking my shoes off. I don't 
want to have to take my shoes off every single time I put this on and off, especially if it, there is a bunch of rain in the area and you're putting them on and off a few times. The next thing is just my rain jacket. This is just a Terex, uh, Adidas Terex rain jacket. It's a full-size rain jacket and an actual full-size hood, so it fits looser. I couldn't throw it over my down jacket. It's just more of a sensible rain jacket versus those skinny, not functional cycling rain jackets. And then I do have one more thing of food in here, and this is, again, the Thai curry. And then I do have some Big Agnes poles, and these are the shorty poles. So this tent's gonna be released sometime this winter. Long John, so if it's summertime, I'm not gonna carry these. If it's warm at night, I'll probably bring these once it's around 50 degrees or lower. Here is just a jersey, so I usually carry two different types of jerseys on a tour, maybe a loose fitting one and then a more of like a jersey style. At least that's what I did on this trip, it worked really well. I knew I was gonna be on a little bit of pavement so I wanted something a little bit brighter. I have just some regular boxers just for camp. The extra bibs that I wore. And so I wore, I pedaled for six days. So I wore these the first three days and then I wore another bib for the other three days. I learned from Joe Cruz using two different styles of uh, chamois work really well so that when you sit down on your saddle, the chamois kind of works a little bit differently, rubbing a different area than the area that was being rubbed. So that's a cool little trick. I just have some extra socks, do the exact same thing, wear socks for three days um, and then take the old socks off and put on new socks. And now I know a lot of people have camp socks. I don't, I just, Use them until they stink. One last thing I didn't mention was this is the hip pack, fanny pack, whatever you want to call it, that I use for uh, my A7 III and an extra lens. I carried a 25 mil lens and then I also carried an 85 mil lens. So I always had those lenses. I had one lens and then the camera in here. And then obviously this little deal to get anything off the sensor. I also carry my wallet in here and a mask for uh, going into stores. This never left my body, so I would never have to go back to my bike to get my wallet or my mask. And um, it seemed to work really well. And that about does it. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you do have any questions about my gear setup, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll definitely get back to you. I'm sure I forgot something. Oh yeah, I forgot a t-shirt. A t-shirt, I always carry a t-shirt in the front bag. So I'd be curious to hear what you all think about this setup uh, and if you have any feedback from me. Um, so thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't done so already, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. That is if you like what you see here. And uh, as always, until next time, pedal further. Thanks.